What is going on guys, Jet95 Gamer here and I'm back with episode 104 of my West Ham United next gen career mode and as you can see by the title the transfer window is still open, it did open last episode and we've got some important matches coming along here with some important transfer business, will any new faces come into the side, you know Kevin De Bruyne has recently signed a contract committing his future to the club which was massive news for West Ham United meaning we're going to have such a quality centre attacking midfielder within our ranks in the next few years. You know, and next, like to come for the next few years, you know, and that's great to see, you know, that, that's stability right there with Oscar, Ravel, Angel Carrera looks like he could be coming into, and obviously Kevin De Bruyne, the new boy. But as you can see, Colin Wickham gets an opportunity here to strike against Burnley, but unfortunately he cannot do it here on that occasion. But this is a very interesting cup tie between Burnley, and we have got three games this episode too, guys, if I haven't said that already. But yes, this is a very interesting game because... You're going to see the likes of Danny Ings return against his former club Burnley and Monobo Miega return too, so it's going to be interesting here. As Danny Ings gets his first opportunity to strike first blood here, but unfortunately his shot just goes past the post there on that occasion. As Burnley come the attack now, West Ham get the ball back and we're looking to hit him on the counter-attack as Danny Ings plays it into the path of Connor Wickham. A delicate little chip over as Ravon Morris has got the strength to get ahead of his man. He does through on goal. I don't know why on earth he took the first time shot there. He should have brought it a little bit forward. But unfortunately, it does go wide on the mark here. But we do win the corner from that shot. It comes into the box. It's headed away by Burnley as it gets tried to get headed back in there. I believe from Jonathan. Actually, that was Ravel. As it falls into Jonathan Stones, who shoots from range. 1-0 hammers. Just like that. Just a couple of minutes before that half-time whistle would be going. But John Stones strikes first with his first ever West Ham United goal in front of the home fans at Upton Park, which is always nice to see. We get that goal. And, you know, that's going to take a lot of pressure off our shoulders. You know, Burnley, a club that are lower division than us, that means we've got a lot of expectation to get the first goal and dominate the game. But, unfortunately, that is not how it would last because they get a shot here and, you know, as you can see, that's a dive. That has got to be a dive, in my opinion. That's the penalty is awarded. Like I said, it, it, it's not like it's not going to last long here as Burnley do win the penalty. From Connor Wickham, who's absolutely fuming, I'll give him every single right. What the hell? Monobo Miega just falls on the... That's a dive. That is a dive in my opinion. And Monobo Miega has got the opportunity to strike against his old club at Upton Park. It'll be interesting to see if he celebrates here. If he does score. Monobo Miega versus Simone Scuffett. Who's actually stood in really well in goal for us the last couple of games. But unfortunately, Monobo Miega would put it into the back of the net. And he celebrates cockingly. You know, cock cockily? Cock... Rather cocky. That's... <laughs> I don't even know what's going on with my fucking wording at the moment, but yes, he does score rather great penalty, but I don't, I, I give him every right to celebrate, you know, in that occasion, because Burnley, uh, I, I kind of did show him no respect by just leaving him out of the team and like giving him to Burnley, but he seemed to make a career out of himself there, as Danny Ying strikes it 2-1, sorry Monobo Miega, but your former player strikes, and you know, great respect there shown by Danny Ying, so I'm not going to celebrate and that, you go, that's a great little touch there showed by Danny Ings because he's a great player and he's, he's got his opportunity to go forward there, which he's has. He's took his chance greatly and the Hammers now back ahead 2-1 up. That's good to see. That is very good to see. As now the ball gets kicked out by Heaton. He kicks it all the way up to Vokes, trying to get Burnley on the attack here, but we win it back with Danny Ings who gets ahead of his former teammates here. Cuts inside. He's got a great opportunity to make it 3-1, but it's straight at the goalkeeper. He's finesse shot. And, you know, nothing comes of that. As we come on the attack again, Burnley win the ball back. And now they're looking to, uh, to turn defence into attack. But we win it back yet again and try and implement the same system as Danny Ings gets played in again. He could have actually by now. He goes down in the box. But, you know, nothing given there as he did slide in to get the ball. Wasted opportunity there. One more attack for West Ham. It's going to be Danny Ings yet again as he comes in the attack. He takes the ball down brilliantly. He's done it all so well. Gets his shot away. But it falls into the path of the goalkeeper. The game does finish at 2-1. It was a tense tie, but I'm glad Dannings got the goal. Modibo Miega, a great welcome back he got, but you know he kind of ruined it with a celebration, you know, against us a bit over the top. But you can't argue with that. Dannings picks up a 7.9 match rating and a man of match award. Very well played there on his like obviously playing against his former club. But now let's get on to some transfer business. Benfica come back saying unacceptable for. Uh, their man Lazar Markovic and as you can see below that and Herrera did accept so we offered 2.5 million plus Adan Januzaj again to try and draw Benfica into a deal with us but it's looking unlikely at this um at this moment in time, which is disappointing, as you can see, and Herrera, we accept the offer for him, 60k a week, and he'll be coming in at Upton Park, 
at the end of or at the start of next season. So he's into the club. Very welcome um, to very warm welcome to Ando Herrera. And now the chances of getting Angel Carrera need to uh, rise now. We offered him and we want to contract negotiation with him. Squad rotation player, five year deal, ten K a week, five percent goal bonus, see what he says to that. Enre Jean, we're still in negotiations with Bayer Leverkusen, not the player yet. So we offer two million and see if we can get him in. Obviously Sebastian Rode looks like he's on his way out. Obviously, I think he was involved in the deal for Angel Carrera going one way. But we're going to a Capital One Cup tie now. It's against Manchester City. It is the semi-finals, actually. It is a, a massive tie here. And I'm hoping the boys can perform in this situation. You know, Manchester City, a hard team to play. I believe we play our strongest possible team for this game. As you can see, Liverpool already got the early advantage in their leg, but hopefully we can beat Manchester City in our, in our turn, you know. I'm hoping we can do it, but you know, only time will tell. It is the City lineup, a very strong City lineup, you know, the Grado, Jovic, great strikers. Verratti Vidal makes a strong centre midfield partnership. It's going to be an interesting game. As City pick up the ball here on the first bit of attack, just dodging in and out of uh, tackles there, Verratti. As he puts the ball over the top, finds Stefan Jovic with the overhead kick, but it's safe into the hands of Courtois. City come on the attack yet again, and this is going to be the likely thing we fought from City here. You know, we know they're going to attack us, and we need to uh, give them our best game ever here. You know, we need to give them. Uh, you know, we need to probably implement, you know, defending and then hitting them on the counter attack. As they do put the ball into the back and it with the grader there, but unfortunately the Spaniard was offside. Uh, only fractionally as Montoya nearly played them onside there, but you know we get let off very easily there. And you know, let off very easily. I don't think that is the word because. I believe it was it was offside anyway, you know, no doubt about it. As Jovetic got an opportunity there, but he strikes just past the post. But early half now here, City dominating things. But we try to get our first attack going here. As Bad Telly against his former club tries to play in Suso, continued his run from him here. Now he's through on goal. Here comes Suso, cuts inside, crosses it in, looking for Oscar, but it, unfortunately the Brazilian can't get his foot to that. And the game still remains at 0 0 going into half time. But as we reach the second half here, here comes Verratti onto the ball, plays into Oscar. Oscar Balotelli, Suso, over the top ball. It is just beautiful into Lucas here. Lucas takes his shot. Great save from Joe up there, and he does hold on to the ball on that occasion. Disappointing from West Ham there. Strootman now. West Ham definitely dominating the second half as we give the ball away there, though. As the Grado tries to play in Jovetic, we win it back, and West Ham definitely coming into their own in the second half. As Lucas has the confidence to take on Yaya Toure there as he crosses it into the back post. Can't find Suso, but Oscar gets his head to the ball off of the post, and Lucas can't get to that follow up there. Disappointing. 83 minutes in. West Ham leaving it late now to get a goal. Obviously, the home tie was the easier for ones, but City are holding on really well there as the ball comes in safely into the hands of Joe Hart from Timo Werner. Milner on the attack now for City. He loses that to Luke Shaw. Literally coming up to ninth minute, coming up to the end of the game here. Balotelli gets the opportunity over the top ball into Timo Werner. Come on, Timo. He gets up the ball here. Can we get a goal? Ball in. Melander. 1 0 the Hammers right at the death here. The Hammers take the lead. Right at the end, I can't believe it. I was in absolute shock. We've got a late goal against Everton last a few episodes ago, and then got another late goal here against City against them in the semi-final first leg here, and that sent the absolute the Upton Park, <laughs> the Upton Park faithful into an absolute frenzy. I couldn't believe it. Melanda gave us a shock lead going into the next round, and rightly so, he picks up man of the match award there. 100% passing, 100% shooting, and 100% tackling. Great from our CDM there. And we have the advantage going in that yeah, he had there. And it's going to be an interesting tie next episode. We will see that though. More transfer business now as Courtois uh, gets subject to a bid from Juventus. We decide to reject all offers and disallow any future offers from any other club there. As you can see, Angel Carrera is now a hammer. He gets played into the team. And that's good to see. Welcome to the club, Angel. And I hope you enjoy it here down at East London because this is a great club to be at, and I'm sure you will enjoy every single moment of it. But now we're going to our final game of the episode, Cardiff City versus the Hammers. Very interesting game. Rodwell playing Kramer, Januzaj, Morrison. Carrera plays in at centre forward. Danny Ings is dropped, and we'll see how the new boy does play in this game. It's going to be an interesting game, like I said. I'm very excited to get it underway. Let's see how it goes. As you can see, there's the BPL table there. Three points clear at the top. We need to get a win in this one to keep the pressure on Chelsea. Obviously, we did draw a game, which means that Chelsea were um, obviously enough to close the five-point gap to three points. So we need to get a win here. 
because that, that would allow Chelsea back into the title race. Here's Timo Werner breaks forward here from Paul defending from Cardiff. They're caught, caught out in possession. Here comes Werner drilling himself into the box, puts it all the way at the back post for Carrera to get his first debut goal, but unfortunately. The attack does um, dwindle to nothing there. That is a great play by Cardiff now. He takes the ball down uh, by Taylor. Taylor plays into Campbell. Fraser Campbell, a great um, layoff ball into Harris. Harris crosses it in, trying to find Campbell. He does actually find the Englishman striker. And he does put it into the back of net to put the Welsh club 1-0 up against West Ham United. 21 minutes in. I was in absolute shock. Again, I couldn't believe... Uh, what happened, we got absolutely broken down. And that's definitely get, got me tapping my head. You know, I couldn't quite see... What the hell our defence was doing there, it just fell apart and we need to definitely become stronger now and show Cardiff that we are the champions and we are going to keep fighting until the last whistle. Whereas Januzaj shows great ability to cut in, beside, in between his two men there and he actually does find Ravel Marston with a delicate header into the top corner to make it 1-1. The Hammers back on target, back on terms, which is always good to see. I was very sceptical back going into this game. I know Cardiff are a team that can strike on their day. But I was still confident we could get a result here. And I'm hoping that we can still get um, a big result in this one. You know, but let's see here. It's kind of getting opportunities to make it 2-1. And they do take it. Fraser Campbell bagging in his second of the game right on half-time. And that's definitely going to dampen our spirits going into the hot, um, obviously the interval here. I couldn't believe it. Again, uh, poor defending. Just broken through the middle. Nothing Luis Eduardo could do. You know, and by the time Jonathan Tarr got to his man... It was already game over and they would have put the ball into the back of the net. 2-1 this game is. Yano Zaya and West Ham looking not, not, not <laughs> don't even, can't even get me words out here. Looking to um, not give up here. Yano Zaya gets the ball off his man and takes a shot from range. And that is a quality goal into the top corner to get this bank game back at 2-2. Hammers back on terms again. But we're hoping we can get a win from this one. Because Cardiff are a great side, like I've said. But we need to keep niggling away at them. Great play from Januzaj, completely just didn't give up on that ball, and that is the reward you get. Hammers back on terms now, and hopefully we can get the three points in this one. As we come to the attack again, 58 minutes in, Werner, doing what he does best, plays a delicate through ball in there. Finds Kramer, who tries to take it around the goalkeeper, it's missed. Falls to Ravel Morrison, and check that out, off the post, you know, that's a bizarre goal, but we're not going to be complaining about that. The game does come at 3-2 now, very well played there from Rav Morrison. Most... Just the most incredible header ever, really. And it, the game's at 3 2 now. But is that going to stop Kyle from getting another goal? Campbell, obviously, on the hat trick. He's hungry for that hat trick. He gets really lucky there off the bounce there off the defender. Gets his shot away. Great save from McCarthy, though. The ball comes back in. Medell. And what a save again from McCarthy to keep the game at 3 2. Made sure West Ham kept the three points in the bag. And that was a great end into the game there. McCarthy. Definitely the reason we've got the three points, and that is the end to the game. Yanazai picks up the man and match award, guys. And that is very well played from the boys. Um, I was shocked about that. You know, I can't get that double save out of my head from McCarthy. That was brilliant from him, and he's the reason we've got three points. But anyway, Emre Jean looks like he's on his way to Upton Park here. Onto contract negotiations now with the centre midfielder, who's 23 years old, the young German man. So hopefully we can get him into the club. As you can see, he does accept it. And he will be playing his football at Upton Park next season. Welcome, welcome, um, <laughs> welcome, Emre Jean. We do accept the deal, um, guys. I had to just do the transfer budget, though. But anyway, that is going to bring an end to the episode. If you did enjoy this video, guys, make sure you hit that like button. It shows a great indication that you are enjoying the series and you want to see more. And obviously, if you new, are new around here, mate, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss a new video that does come out. And obviously, FIFA 15 is only around the corner. And I'm sure you would like to see that journey with me, guys, uh, take its toll. So, no, I can't wait to start that new journey. But anyway, guys, have a really nice day. And I'll catch you in the next episode. Peace.